Hello everyone, I am Sushmita Sarkar and I'm Assistant Professor in Tripoli Department of RV College of Engineering, Bangalore. I'm going to handle Module 1 in Power System Analysis 2 course. So your Module 1 is all about load flow studies. So what we'll see in this load flow studies is, we'll go for first introduction of the basic power system concepts. Then we'll go for the network model formulation. We'll learn how to form a network. Then formation of Y bus. So this is formation of Y bus can be done by using two methods. One we call it as an inspection method and second we call it as a um, singular transformation method. Fine, so after understanding the uh, formation of Y bus, we'll be learning about load flow concepts, fine. So in this, we'll be learning about the different type of buses we have in our power system. What are the parameters which is required uh, to study this load flow analysis? And then we will be learning about the static load flow equations and why the load flow analysis is iterative and uh, iterative techniques is used. So there are basically three methods to do this analysis, but first method is covered in module one, which we call it as a Gaussian method. Other two methods are newton raphson method and past couple load flow method. Those two methods will be covered in module two. So let us start our module one with load flow studies, fine. So here, uh, so we know our modern power system is large, highly complex and organized uh, in the form of regional grids. So which are interconnected uh, to facilitate power transformer in various areas via the tie lines. So our interconnections make the system reliable and flexible. Uh, for example, if the uh, power demand increases in certain areas, so we can easily borrow from the neighboring areas. And also this interconnection makes, uh, reduces, helps in reducing the uh, reserve capacity in each area. So this makes our system quite reliable and flexible. Fine. And since our system is quite huge and interconnected between various regions, so these modern power systems are controlled from an energy control center. Fine. So these control centers permit uh, hierarchical conditions uh, and under uh, emergency conditions, uh, the control over the system operation to coordinate with the various areas. Fine, so these particular control centers are basically the SCADA, uh, which uh, we say as supervisory control and data acquisition, where the data is accessed centrally via the remote acquisition system. Fine, so these data acquisition and processing system operating conditions or control are analyzed with extensive use of digital computers. So let us see what these digital, digital computer needs so here we see this, the digital computer needs first is the basic mathematical model. So fine, so here you can see is the mathematical model of the system network is the first requirement. And this mathematical model will help in analysis of steady state in form of network equations. And this equations will further help us in understanding the characteristics of the individual behavior of the elements and their inter connections and this we do with the help of impedance and admittance parameters. Fine. So after that, uh, we see what is the importance of power system analysis. So power system requires continuous evaluation. Fine. So these continuous evaluations can be offline or it can be offline. So online analysis for operation and control, whereas offline analysis is for planning and future expansion. Fine, so these uh, evaluations need to be done for certain studies. So what are these studies? They are called as certain important studies. So these studies are first load flow analysis, so which we are going to cover in this particular module. So here this analysis will help us to know the uh, complex uh, voltages at every buses in the network, as well as the power flows in all the lines. Fine, so in more depth, we'll be seeing what happens exactly in this particular case of analysis in this module. Then it also helps in study of economic dispatch where we are interested to know the uh, generation scheduling to meet the particular demand by keeping the generation cost, generating cost minimum. 
quite similarly fault analysis, which you guys have already studied in your previous semesters, where uh, you know that faults are either asymmetrical or unsymmetrical faults. And the studies of these are really important for the design of the protective systems. Fine. And stability analysis, the next study which we see is the stability analysis. So this stability analysis you will be studying in this present uh, course. So where we actually study uh, the, it is an ability, it explains the ability of the system to remain in synchronism even after experiencing a certain disturbances. And the studies can be online as well as offline. Fine. Similarly, automatic generation control is basically an online studies where we maintain the frequency and the net tie line interchanges between different interconnected areas. Fine. With this uh, basic, let us uh, start our network uh, model formulation. Fine. So to understand this concept, let us take a bus where we see that this bus is connected with the number of generators, okay? And this bus is also connected with the number of nodes. So what is the net power it will be transferring to the rest of the network? So what, what is the power equation? So to understand that, let us say uh, taking any bus, which is called as i bus, okay? So it can be any bus from bus number one to bus number n, it can be any bus. Fine. So here we see that the net power in this complex power in this particular I bus will be the generated power minus the demand power. Fine. So this generated power complex power can be defined as PGI plus JQGI because all of us know that the complex power is usually defined as the real power plus the imaginary power. Fine. So like that we are defining the generated power and the demand power which is PDI plus JQDI. So basically I can write the SI as a real power plus the imaginary power at that particular uh, bus, fine. So to understand this last equation, let us uh, put uh, split this i bus. So when we split this i, I bus to visualize the uh, trans, uh, transmission SI, so what I do, this is what this trans transmission SI will be getting what is you are injecting into the bus and what you are taking away from the bus. Fine, so anything injecting power into the bus will be always taken as a positive and power drawn from the bus will be always taken as a negative. Fine, so you can see that SI is equal to SGI minus of SDI. So SGI is PGI, uh, PGI plus JQGI and SDI PDI plus JQDI. So you just take the real, separate the real part and imaginary part separately. So this generation minus demand will basically will tell you the injected power at the i bus, the net power at the i bus, and this will be the net reactive power at the i bus. This will give you the net real power and this will give you the net reactive power, which we have written over there, PI plus of JQI. Fine. So now, same way, we can also talk about the i bus uh, current. So if I have to define the bus current at the i bus, in the same way, I'll be writing II is equal to IGI minus of IDI. So it is a generator uh, current minus the load current will give me the net current at the I bus. Fine. So now let us see the formation of Y bus. So Y bus, as I told you before also, it can be formed in two basic ways. So the first one is called as an inspection method and third, uh, second one, we call it as a singular transformation method. Fine. So inspection method, as the name suggests, as soon as you look at the network, as soon as you inspect the network, you will be able to form the Y bus. Fine. So it will be easier to form directly if you have, uh, uh, by taking an assumption that you have no mutual coupling in the uh, transmission lines and uh, you are not taking care of the shunt advert and you are not taking care of the regulating transformers. If these two assumptions you take it, then that the inspection method uh, will be very easier. And as soon as you look at the network, you can tell what is your Y bus under those two assumptions. That is the assumption number one, which we'll be seeing over here. Fine. Assumption number one, I'll just come back to this. So we will be doing that. That is, there's no mutual coupling between the transmission line and there is an absence of regulating transformer. So in, in these two cases, 
uh, it will not be very easier just to look at the Y bus uh, and look at the uh, network and form an Y bus. Fine. So uh, let us say we have four, so a network with the four buses where we are injecting a power, injecting a current I1, I2, I3, and I4 at the respective buses. And the voltage at these four buses are V1, V2, V3, and V4. Okay. So the V bus, when we write a matrix of a V bus, so it will be like all the buses which you have in your network. So right now my network represents four buses. So it is V1 to V4. And this represents your injected current. These are your bus voltages and these are your injected current at the respective buses. Fine. So usually we know we write it as V bus is equal to Z bus into I bus. But the same equation when I have to transfer in the form of Y bus. What I have to do? Then equation transforms as Y bus, I bus is equal to Y bus into V bus where Z bus where Z bus is nothing but one divided by Y bus or Y bus is nothing but one divided by Z bus. Fine. So why do we have, uh, why it is easier to uh, form, a, it is easier to form a Y bus and the app main application of the Y bus is in a load flow analysis. Fine. So here we'll see uh, later on, once we finish the chapter, we will understand why we use Y bus for load flow analysis and why we can't use Z bus. Because once the concept is clear, then you yourself will be able to answer that question. Okay, so now let us understand how to go about an inspection method. So now this is a network with three buses. You can see it. And these three buses, I'm injecting a current I1, I2, and I3. Fine, so these three currents are having a, a series line impedances. So Y12, it is connected this uh, series line admittances, sorry, series line admittances. It is connected between uh, bus one and bus two. So it is marked as Y12. Remember, this is a small Y12 we denote it as. And this is as a, a small Y13 because this particular line is connected between one and three. And uh, similarly, Y23 is connected between two and three. So you can see the respective line currents Y12, Y13, and Y23. Fine, so V1, V2, V3 are the bus voltages and I1, I2, I3 are the bus currents. So now if I take uh, any line between any two buses, so for here, for an example, I have taken a line one, which is between bus one and two. And this line one is having an admittance of Y12. So that is called a series admittances. So with that, we have something called in inherent capacitance between the transmission line and the ground. So we call that usually as a half-line charging admittance. So we denote it as YSH12 by 2 and YSH12 by 2 at both the end of the line. Okay, so this effect is due to the inherent capacitance exist between the line and the ground. Then how do I represent the effect of that charging admittance in my network? So, you know, every line will have that effect and that uh, half line charging ad uh, admittances will be represented in this particular format. So this is YSH12 by 2. This is also YSH12 by 2. This is YSH13 by 2, YSH132 by 2. And similarly, these two are YSH23 by 2. So they are half line charging admittance of the respective lines. Fine. So now I already told you, so what will be, will be now if I have to know what is the shunt uh, line charging admittance at a particular bus one. So if I have to know the line charging admittance at this particular bus one, I will be adding this half line charging admittance plus this half line charging admittance will give me the total line uh, line charging admittance at bus one. So that is YSH12 plus YSH13 by two. Fine. So now similarly, I'll be writing an equation for YSH2. So this YSH2 is the shunt line charging admittance at bus two, which is this, this particular shunt plus this particular shunt divided by two. So YS, whether, whether you write YSH23 by two plus YSH12 by two, or you write it in this way, both means same. Fine, now, so look at this after adding this shunt YSH12 by 2 plus YSH13 by 2, what do I get it as? YSH1. That's how what we have written in the previous slide. So we have seen this is a total line charging admittances at bus 1. Similarly, the total line charging admittances at bus 2. 
So this line charging admittances at a particular bus is will be the addition of all the lines, all the half line charging admittances which are connected to a particular bus. You have to keep at all the half line charging elements of the respective lines which are connected to a particular bus will give you the line charging admittance at that particular bus. Fine. So now with this basic, let us write the equation. So to understand the equation, let us go back to the uh, network. Fine. So here, if I have to find out the current I1, this is my current injected current I1. So you can see it's a simple KCL. So your current is going as Y12 plus Y13 plus YSH1. I repeat, Y1 is equal to Y12 plus Y13 plus uh, I, so I1 is equal to I12 plus I13 plus ISH1. So when you add these all currents, you will get the current at bus 1. Total current at injected current at bus 1. Similarly, the total injected current at bus 2 will be I12 plus I23 plus of ISH2. All the elements which are connected or all the lines which are connected to the bus uh, 2 will be get added up and will give you the total injected current at that particular bus. Fine. So basically, I am getting the uh, currents at uh, the respective uh, buses. Fine. So now you look at the equation, guys. So now if we look at the equation, so I'm basically writing I1 is equal to I12 plus I13 uh, plus ISH1. So what is this I12? So I go back to the network to make you uh, to um, for a better explanation. So this is I12. So I12 is nothing but this voltage, the difference between both the end voltage multiplied by the series admittances. I repeat, the, rest, the current I12 is the difference between both the end voltages, which is V1 minus V2 multiplied by the admittance Y12 will give me the value of I12. Similarly, I13, I'll be writing V1 minus V3 multiplied by Y13. So I hope it is clear for you. So now I will be substituting the same equation. I, as I told you, I12 is this and I13 is this. So now when you write in this particular format, now open the brackets and get your equation in the form of V1, V2 and V3. So when you open the bracket, you will be getting the term as Y12 plus Y13 plus YSH1 will have a all these terms are having V1. So you can see you are getting a V1 and with the V2, I have this particular term for V2 only in the whole equation. So I'm getting minus V2 into Y12. This equation for the third bus, similarly, I'll be getting minus V3, Y13. So this is my current equation for bus number one. Similarly, I'll be writing the equation for bus number two, substitute the values. If it is I21, put it as V2 minus V1. I23, put it as V2 minus V3, fine. And the respective, whatever you see over here variables, the same admittance will be multiplied with the respective voltages. So here also you open the bracket and arrange it in order of V1, V2 and V3. So fine. So here, similarly, I write the equation for I3. So here, what do you notice is the, if I'm finding out the bus current at I1, so you can see over here the equation. I know this is I1, I2, I3 are the injected bus currents. Okay. V1, V2, V3 are the respective bus voltages. So what do I require? I require as a Y bus. So basically I want to know what are the elements of my Y bus. So this is, you can see when I put this equation, I1 equation, I2 equation, and I3 equation, I put it in a matrix form. Fine. So what do I get? This is how it looks in a matrix form. So I'm putting the equation in terms of matrix form. So you can see all the diagonal elements, which is your Y11, Y22, Y33. All the diagonal elements are nothing but addition of all the line admittances connected to that particular bus. Fine. So your first, uh, first bus connected with Y12, Y13, you can see the term here. One is there, which will explain you Y12. Y13 and YSH1. If you remember the network, this is these are the three lines which are connected to bus one. So it gives you addition of all the lines which is connected to the bus one. This gives you addition of all the lines which is connected to bus two. Similarly, 
this is bus 3 fine now let us see what about the off line off line will become minus y12 minus y1 y3 it will be negative of the uh, it will become negative of the um, line uh, series in, uh, admittances negative of the series uh, line series admit, uh, admittances fine so here you can see this also should be minus y23 and this also should be minus y32 so these two terms also should be in negative so all the off dynamic elements will be the negative of the line charging uh, uh, series uh, line uh, admittances okay so all the off dynamic elements will be negative of the series line admittances and diagonal elements will be your addition of all the line admittances connected to that particular bus fine so basically my y bus looks like this so this will give me a capital y11 this will give me a capital y11 okay so sorry so uh, just okay. so here I'll just erase this. So this will give me a, this particular element will give me a Y11, fine. So this gives you Y12, fine. This gives you Y13, fine. This is Y13, fine. Similarly, this is, that's how you have to understand over here the difference between the small Y and the capital Y. It's very important because usually students will go wrong in understanding the concept of the line admittances and the bus admittances, okay? So this gives you the bus elements and this gives you the line elements value, okay? Fine, uh, this is your bus admittances, these are your line admittances, this is your Y bus. So now, what we write in general, I'm writing in Y bus for N number of buses, suppose the system is having N number of buses, so my Y bus is somewhat going to look like this. So here the important thing to notice that all the diagonal elements y11, y22, y33 till ynn, okay, all the diagonal elements is known as self admittance or driving point admittance, very important. All these diagonal elements are called as self admittance or driving point admittance. Similarly, the off diagonal elements that is your y12, y13, y23, anything, something which is not in the diagonal line, it is off diagonal called as. Fine. So these off diagonal elements are called as transfer admittance. Okay. Repeat. Diagonal elements are called as self admittance or driving point admittance. Off diagonal elements are called as transfer admittance. Fine. Note since the power systems are bilateral in nature, that's why you get a Y bus as a symmetrical matrix. Okay, so why Y bus is a symmetrical matrix? Because the power system is bilateral in nature. So like in the previous, what I meant by saying that, whatever you write over here, the off diagonal element over there, sorry, this is really wrong. Fine, so the, whatever you write, over here, uh, this particular, the first row will be same as your first column. Second row will be same as your second column. Third row will be same as your third column. So we call it as a symmetrical matrix. So remember Y bus is a square and symmetrical matrix. Fine, so, and why it is symmetrical? The reason is written over here because power system is bilateral in nature. And your off diagonal elements is usually a negative admittance between the buses M and N, between the two buses, right? Y bus is a square matrix of size N cross N. Y bus is a square matrix, a size N cross N. Here is a very uh, important concept which you have to understand. That is the effect of half line charging admittance when it is present into the system, you already get the reference point which is acting as a ground, fine? So if the, with the half line charging present in the half line charging admittance, you will get the effect or uh, you get the reference point. So we say the uh, Y bus matrix will become N cross N. So in the absence of half line charging admittance, what will happen in the absence of half line charging admittance, you have absolutely no ground point. So one of the bus existing bus will be considered as a reference bus. So in that case, the size of Y bus will become N minus one cross N minus one. 
Right? So say here it is written, just know what I have explained to you, it is written over here. In case of shunt admittances are present, then Y bus matrix becomes singular as the sum of each row and column becomes zero. If you add your values of a particular line, the first row, when you add, it becomes zero in the absence of shunt admittances. Okay, so the, what happens? Y bus becomes singular. So to avoid that, we usually take one of the bus as a reference bus. So when you treat one of the bus as a reference bus, then the size of the Y bus becomes N minus cross N minus one. Okay, so basically very important point, reference bus is taken to avoid the singularity of Y bus matrix, fine. So though that every row should not get it as a zero. So to avoid that one of the bus should be considered as a reference bus in absence of, very important thing, in absence of shunt admittances. If shunt admittances are present, then automatically you get a reference point due to the grounding, but uh, grounding effect. Okay, but otherwise you have to consider in absence of these admittances, you have to consider one of the bus as a reference bus. So now it's a quiz time, guys. So let us answer the questions. So I throw first questions on you guys. What is the size of Y bus? for a power system consists of four buses without half-line charging admittance and with half-line charging admittance. I give you some time to think over it. So please think, I hope I was able to uh, make you understand the concept of Y bus with and without half-line charging admittance. So please give me the answer fast, think fast. I repeat, what is the size of Y bus for a power system consists of four buses without half-line charging admittance and with half-line charging admittance. I hope few of you are already uh, ready with your answers. Okay, so just look at our answers. What are these? So without half-line charging admittance, you know guys that one of the bus has to be considered as reference bus. So what will happen the size of the matrix? It will become N minus one cross N minus one, where N is the number of buses. So you can see in this case, my N is equal to four. So here N is given equal to four. So if it is without half line charging admittance, then my formula says the size of the Y bus will become N minus one cross N minus one. So what will be my answer? It will be three cross three. Okay, it will be three cross three. But similarly, if I'm doing for the second one with half line charging admittance, that means already the ground point is existing. So what I will be getting the size of the matrix is N cross N, which means the answer for the second part is four cross four. Okay, so hope I'm clear with this logic. <coughs> Let us see the answer. Fine, so without half-line charging admittance three cross three and with half-line charging admittance, it is four cross four. I hope it, this particular basic is clear for everyone. Fine, we'll go to the next question. Does all the elements of Y bus gets affected with addition of half-line charging admittance? Guys, think where do we add half-line charging admittance? Correct, we add them to a diagonal elements. So that means all the elements of Y bus will not get affected as the shunt admittance only gets added up in your diagonal elements. Okay, so only diagonal elements will get affected. Okay, so the answer is no. And the reason behind it, the shunt admittances will get added only in the diagonal elements. Okay, so we have got this. Now question number three. How many elements in Y bus gets affected when a line between buses P and Q is disconnected? Please all of you read this question and understand the logic behind it. If I have a network of N cross N bus, if I have a Y bus, Y bus with N cross N uh, size, or if I have a network with N number of elements, okay, or E number of elements, and if one of the elements I remove or one of the elements I add, how many elements in Y bus will be getting affected? Please think guys fast. Okay, 
so now let us discuss fine so you know what is the answer how many elements yeah those who are able to think they are right that only four elements in y bus gets affected so what are those four elements ypp yqq ypq and yqp so this is one of the major reason why do we use y bus for a load flow analysis because in load flow analysis with the addition of a line or with the removal of line or with any kind of modification in the line the y only four elements of y bus will be getting affected but in case of a z bus all the elements of the matrix z bus matrix will get affected so you need more time for the calculation and uh, uh, more uh, time you spend on on these kind of calculations so which we can save in case of a y bus and y bus very clearly even if you look at the y bus and you see the four particular these four elements got uh, uh, affected by looking at the matrix only you can say the network has been modified exactly at which part of the network okay for an example if there is a four buses in the system and the line between 2 and 3 for an example suppose i have a a uh, uh, system network with a four bus okay suppose you have a four bus system fine so let me say this is bus number 1 2 3 and 3 and 4 okay so now in this if suppose the line between 1 and 2 okay the line between 1 and 2 gets disconnected okay so line between 1 and 2 gets disconnected by any reason by a different there may be hundred of reasons there are faults present in the system and suddenly there some disturbances and you just isolate the line or due to the higher demand uh, load has increased and you need to um, yeah, one line is getting burdened up so you are just uh, uh, isolating that particular line from the rest of the network so what happens in that case what are the elements are getting affected by doing this the elements which are will be getting affected is y11 y22 okay y12 and y21 okay so these are the four elements which will get affected which will be changed after any kind of modification in that particular uh, line between the bus 1 and 2 okay so this is the main basic things you remember that this is one of the reason why do we use y bus for load flow analysis fine so i have written the reason also that example i have put it over there fine thank you guys thank you for listening to me i hope you have understood the basic concept of y bus and you have understood the concept of uh, inspection method and we have done this uh, inspection method keep it in mind two things we have not considered the mutual coupling and we have not taken the regulating transformer into a picture fine so have a nice day thank you once again